Since we have our chiller in the attic, we like to put a little insulation on the lines. You just go to your local hardware store and get some insulation, which is very easy to install. Just open it up and slip the line into it. And that will insulate us from the heat in the attic. Add sand. Some people like to put the live rock at the bottom of the tank first, but I don't. I like to add the sand first because it gives the rock something to sit on. Also, it's always good to have a small child to help. I like my crushed coral to be about an eighth of an inch because fine sand will blow away. Detritus tends to build up in the sand. I like to level out the sand in the main tank. After the sand debris has cleared from the water, you are ready to add your live rock. Add live rock. It should be cured at this point so as not to stink up your house. My general rule is to add about a pound to a pound and a half per gallon. Rest the bigger pieces on the bottom and place the smaller pieces on the top. Caves are good as they give fish places to hide and feel secure. Keep it in the open and area as possible. Holes in the rock also assure good water flow throughout the whole tank. Detritus builds up around the live rock where it touches the substrate. So try to have the live rock up on points instead of laying down. Elevating the rock is good as it will let the coral sit closer to the light. Try to slope the rock on an angle so that the light hits all the way down. If you build the rock wall straight up and down, corals on the top will get the light but the corals on the bottom may not have sufficient light to survive. I'm not a big fan of securing rock down, as once you lock rock in, it is difficult to change, and you have no chance of catching problem fish. Besides, even unsecured rock is very difficult for the inhabitants to move, and I have found cave-ins to be extremely rare. By using live rock and live sand, your tank should be ready for fish in two to three days.